Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today is day 10 of Acrylic April where we meet up every day and do a small painting. So we're doing 30 and 30. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He, he's going to be tracking me with all of our cameras, and this morning he's been wrestling the internet. So he's our tech guy, and he's going to be keeping us online and kind of organized. If you check the description below, you're going to see a link to our website, and on there is a video all about the background color, how to sketch the bird in. There's also some value study and some more information. Lots of extras for you, all free. Also in the description below, you'll see the materials, exchanges, those kinds of things. So I'm ready to get on into day 10. I can't believe looking back. It, it, it doesn't feel just 10 days ago that we started. It almost feels like a distant, distant, distant time away these 10 days, right? So we're getting into that space <laughs> in the paint journey. I'm ready to paint Mr. Parrot. Puffy pace. All right. Okay. Let's see here. Here it goes. All right. So I have him laid out. This is an eight by eight little surface, and I did a gray ground on it. I used a chalk pencil and sketched that in. And again, if you want to see that video on how to do that or just get a traceable, that will be on the website. I have my paint colors out. I've got my CAD yellow medium hue. I have my vermilion. I have my magenta. I'm not going to put out any ultramarine today. I've got my phthalo green, my um, primary blue, my Naples yellow, my black, and my white. So not the full palette today, but pretty close. I think we have exactly the colors we need to catch him in a fresh and happy way. Mm. And I will start with my number eight, Cambridge. These brushes, little number eight, scruffly, scruffly brush for scruffly, scruffly bird. And I'm going to do kind of an interesting thing. So we had talked about that he should be gray. And I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and put a bit of black in it. If you did the color chart, that's some white. If you did the color chart with us, you saw how yellow and black could make a greenish color. And we're going to just loosely brush around here. I think I want it more to the gray. I want it a warmed gray, but still gray. Um, and the idea for neutralizing this background a bit is so that he can really stand out as you would want him to. That's kind of that bokeh effect there, isn't it? Yeah, we're just giving a nice little bokeh, but we're doing it real soft. No. And hopefully the two of them will, these two colors and the bird will just dance against each other. One of the questions I see a lot is, what is bokeh? Okay. Oh, uh, well, in photography, it refers to an out of focus effect uh, that some filters do and some focus lengths do. In painting, it's a similar thing, um, but we, we don't do it with filters. We have to do it with the skills, <laughs> Our art skills. Art skills to make them out of focus background. And that no helps more. emphasize that foreground ob object a bit. It more. really does. It really does. And sometimes when you have something that's very colorful, I'm going to bring some of the background into where I know the feathers are going to be coming out. You can actually exaggerate some of those colors by putting the subject against a more neutral background and it can create a more modern looking piece. Now, that's a why does yellow and black make greenish? Uh, because black actually, most black pigment has almost a blue undertone to it. A lot of landscape painters use that mix um, for their more neutral shadow greens and things. So if you were coming from a very digital perspective, it might seem strange that black turns into another color when you add it, white. From a like digital it. art perspective, it would seem bizarre as all get out. <laughs> and, and that's because you're dealing with a pigment and not a pure color. Exactly. Exactly. Now I'm going to start kind of laying in his beak. His beak is very interesting. So I'm going to pull a little black. And in this particular case, we're going to go a little blue. See how we're really working our, our colors here, right? I'm going to start putting this in. I loved uh, giving him a little draw. Because he was so cute. Fun to draw. Fun to draw. And the beak is such an interesting shape. So when I have that beak painted in, I'm going to do the top and the bottom mm -hmm. at the same time. I'm going to keep enough of my little guidance here so that 
I don't lose it completely. You'll notice that there's a bit of a highlight, get into that, in the center of the beak right here. So I'll come along his little thing and talk about that highlight a little bit. And there's also one right here. Got a little too much white on there. So it's just blending in. It comes across his beak a bit. You want to have that going. Maybe I'll come back with a small amount of gray there. If you need to come back and you know, kind of clip him in. And that'll be something that can kind of happen sometimes where you're like, oh, I got to really clip that in. You just come back with your background mix and make sure that you have what you need there. Isn't that nice? It really is. Now, I feel like I clipped the wrong way. There are days that are just like that. So what I'll do is I'll give myself a better angle. That's really important for your posture, isn't it? Yes, very important for my posture. I will be doing some like little highlights and things uh, around his beak, but for right now, that's the direction that I'm I'm ready to go. Yeah. I'm going to take a little bit of my magenta, just a small amount of my magenta, to my Naples yellow. And we're going to do an interesting thing here. We're going to come in to the front of his face with this sort of pink, and that's because you can sort of see his little skin through the... Yeah, it's a little bit rosy, and I I wanted to see his little rosiness. Even if we come back and kind of do some white over it, having this peek through I thought would be gorgeous. Now, here in Acrylic April, we're doing things a little bit different than we normally do. Yeah, it's a little bit... Di like, a lot of the things that you like are the same, like traceables, like step-by-step -step instructions... Um, the palette's changed up a lot, but if you read the description below, it tells you what we already use in our palette that's in exchange for vermilion, which is basically naphthol red medium or cad red medium. Right. So it, you are familiar with everything you see here, even if you think you're not, like primary blue, that's thalo blue. Mm. So you're okay. They were wondering, you seem to be, you, you know, they were, should I adjust the surface, the, 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 the canvas holder that up a little bit so you aren't having to... Uh, lean over as much? Which one? The one you're working on right now. Is Adjust it what over? Is it a comfortable height for you? Oh, I think it is. Yeah. I'll look at that the next time I'm doing a practice painting. I did a little bit of pink around the eye. I may come back and work that a little bit. I really like that. I, I've noticed you generally keep your easel about at the same height, no matter what, what size surface you're working on, because your bottom of the surface is always about the same. That's place. what I'm always looking for is just to keep my bottom. I don't want to reach up way too high and I don't want to reach way down low. And I generally tune that in by if my arm begins to hurt or struggle. That's what I'm looking for. Is my arm struggling? Is my arm hurting? Now, here we go again. I'm going to take a lot of my phthalo green, a lot, and a little bit of black. And I'm going to begin to put this in right here. We have a lot we've got to do. Also, so because because of the time constraints here, we what? don't generally we're not quite as chatty as we usually. Well, are. and you know, I think today I'm I'm a little bit tired, <laughs> but I'm sure some of you guys are coming home from work. I'm reading your stories, you know, and you're painting tired, so that'll happen on a daily painting sometimes you get to a daily painting and you're like wow i'm i'm a little bit tired i don't know i think your coffee's kicked in because you're you're going you know you're scooting along pretty good there oh well right now i'm just comfort painting <laughs> <laughs> this is this is very comforting to me well i like the bird too it's you've you've done a lot of birds i do i like a bird i tend to make them sassy or do, judgy and i'm working on that i'm i'm gonna be transitioning into my blue I don't even rinse my brush out, interestingly enough. Maybe we should call yeah, this maybe we should call this one he's he, it's like uh, let's see here, one of our community was saying, Where'd he go? Mr. Palace says this one's looking a little uh he's looking he's looking intense. Maybe this is Alfred. <laughs> we'll see how he comes out, because it can be 
It can be a thing, right? He's got his eye. I wonder what he's going to, whether he's, I was trying well, see, to see, we up. won't know until I finish his eye because that's where I, I tend to get a little too much personality going in my birds. I, I looked up words that could rhyme, like, uh-huh. but all I could find is malicious macaw. No, he's not malicious. I don't think he's malicious. And He might be moody at moody. best. He can be moody, moody macaw at best. There we go. That may be. But then what macaw, all you bird owners, what macaw is not a little bit moody, right? Like, that's a whole, like, day by day thing. <laughs> They're very smart, these creatures. Uh. Although, uh, now every time I see a parrot, I just think of Johnny Depp. Really? Well, because of all of his pirate movies. Well, I, you know, I thought you were going to say Rio or like, I was like, was he in Rio? No, no, the pal- <laughs> because he's done all these pirate movies. And so like, you know, I don't know. I'm still toning. I'm shading my, uh, not toning. I'm shading my blue with some black. Yeah. I'm going to come here. But do you can see I've just, none of the green is in my brush anymore, really. And so that sort of changes its little nature a bit. Brushing that forward. Wow, we're just painting him much looser. Today, during this month, we're painting things much looser. Now, I would think that feathers lend themselves more to a loose interpretation. <gasps> they do. They do. Like, I get why Angela Moulton is like all little birds all the time. I'm like, yes, girl. Where's yes. Those? Yes, queen. Yes. So, that happened. When making smooth bony surfaces that seems to be more detail oriented like you have to get the blend otherwise it looks like you got like right well like there's there's definitely a thing afoot now i'm going to rinse this brush out incredibly well and i may even here's my advice if you're trying to get into some bright colors you may even go like take your brush to the sink if you only have one brush that you're doing this with like you've only got one cambridge because you really really want all of the pigment out mm. like out 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 so i'm gonna take my yellow here must be in my vermilion and that makes kind of an orange and then i'm gonna take what do you know again a little black <laughs> and you're gonna notice that this actually makes almost a brown there's a there's a couple really nice chromatic browns that you can just mix um, with primaries, the thing is, is that mixing all your colors from just uh, primary colors, whether it's split primary or um, three primaries, is, as you guys have learned, very challenging. Is it not? All right, so we're coming here. Little, little fluffy bits coming down here. So we've got the first layers uh, happening. Almost. And he's all gray on gray on gray. But looking kind of nice, I think. It's handsome. Back into my black and blue. I'm putting a little blue into my black, but it's going to read a little differently. And he's got, it's a little fluffy into there. Don't, you know, don't lose your fluffs. You need some fluffs. There we go. So that is starting to be a thing now i'm going to come in with my round this is my number four round and i'll just go ahead and get some of my pure naples i'm gonna paint that little eye in like you do i'm also going to take my naples interestingly enough instead of my white and then come along the little beak and do some of that lining that we're seeing. Because you do get a little lining on a beak. You have an interesting little weathering that happens. And it can be very nice to catch if you can. So it's just a small touch of things. It's not a big deal. But if you want to show that. A little more of my navels on there. I've got that sort of pink, wonderful little rosé around, and I'll get into my black. And here's where it gets, you know, this is where I always get my birds get a little too much personality. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They get, they get a little bit going on there. Well, I think <laughs> birds just have a tendency to get... They, they have actually quite a lot of personality. There we go. I'll adjust up there. Okay, so we're going to put this in. 
as long as these pupils are not super small or super big, you're okay. You see those pupils change shape a lot one way or the other? Step back. They're coming to get you. Yes. <laughs> That's their, it's, really? That eye gets little. It's like, you have been selected. <laughs> to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> suffer as no human has ever suffered before you. <laughs> if only I were about 100 pounds heavier. Oh, if they were 100 pounds heavier, we would all be in trouble. Yes. We would have a much different relationship. So when I get that in, I'm going to get back into my Cambridge. I right, got my little Cambridges here, still number eight. And let's come in and we did a little bit of our magenta and our Naples yellow to make that first mix. And now let's get some white into it. <laughs> Quick draw, macaw. <laughs> Just start working that in there. He's got a short fuse. Quick draw, macaw. They all have short fuses. Don't Luckily, we've got a traceable for him, so you yeah. can take your time when you draw him. Yeah. You don't have to draw them quick. You can come grid them with us if you want. I make grid videos and value videos and all those things. I was worried that I had it uh, too dark, but I, I I guess that you just are really working those darker tones so far. Yeah, I think we were kind of keeping that going at first. I'm actually starting to loosen up. Though the other day, I... I uh, did a painting where I was like, man, I'm more tight than I want to be. All right, I'm adding a little more rose to that. I'm going to put that right here. Is that back cheek? Isn't that nice? I was noticing that the subject matter really changes how loose you can or can't work on something. It feels to me often that it can't, right? It feels to me that you can end up having some subjects which are like, but here's what I've learned. I've watched a lot of daily painters and I've done a few daily paintings, which I will share. Um, and what I think happens is that eventually all subjects become one subject, or at least in my experience, that's what's happened. All subjects become one subject. And then <laughs> I'm adding a little bit of my yellow to my green. I'm just saying that, you know, if you do a face of someone and you loosely put in their teeth, that's going to be something. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen them do it, so I'm just saying. It, I, well, it it's a doable. But it, I think, like anything else, there's relative to, to you know, you gotta at yeah, scale. It's know, all relative, right? Yeah, I think I think you gotta take. I don't know. I'm. I just looked at like you know how certain. I'm I, gonna I, Turn this a bit, maybe. Nope, I've got it here. I'm going to be stronger with my green right here. And this is totally, totally a backseat kind of thing because I watch as it seems easier for you to interpret things like feathers or fur, loosely, hair. Yeah. Whereas, like, facial features are much more challenging to interpret loosely. Oh, because... You really have to be so good at them to get them loose. All right, I'm going to pull a lot more yellow into my brush. You can see that takes it really, really high. And I'm going to come up here and just at the top. A few little bright peaks there. And then uh, maybe like right there. The center, bringing that through. Coming up. There he is. Find, Find your macaw. Mm, mind your macaw. <laughs> That's what they all say. Mind your macaw. That's just what they're all thinking. <laughs> no. Obey. All the macaws? All the macaws are just Everywhere looking like, at us like... Obey me. I'm coming back with my uh, skin color. I'm going to just trim that in just a little bit around the eye. You can see my brush is still pretty fluffy, but it doesn't, doesn't hinder me at all. I just... It lends yeah. itself to the feathering? It does. It says, I will feather, and you will feather, and we'll all be a feather, too. Back into our green. Let's see if we can pull some of these right there. What? Uh-oh, scam likely is calling. Maybe I should take it. Oh. All right, so I'm going to get into my blue. When I'm loading up, I'm going to get a little bit of my white into that. I'm going to give him some blue feathers. 
it's nice, I think, to come back and touch into the green a little bit, if you can see. It's just a little bit of the blue and the white. And I haven't even really rinsed out uh, the green. You can see I'm kind of curving my stroke as I make it back. Just touching and pulling. When I come here, I can get into a slightly lighter blue. And these feathers can be a little bit more at an angle as they can be. And back into the blue. Always interesting, isn't it? Me, it is, anyways. Hmm. How's he doing? Looking really good. And you're st are you still on the same brush there? I'm still on this number eight Cambridge. I haven't even. I did a little round, but mostly I'm just like, hey, this is cool. Just finding him. You can come in and do a little blue and green to make it a little more phthalo turquoise. You know, maybe up here at the top of the wing. Pay attention to the direction of the feathers. You don't have to paint each individual feathers, just the texture and their direction is sometimes super helpful. And then we just use value and turn him a little bit to really talk about the shape of the wing. So you can see I'm just pressing this down. These are pretty bold strokes. You can see the dark value underneath. At the back of the wing here, I can bring some just pure blue around. So Maybe even right here. Doing pretty down good. at the bottom. Coming in right at the 22 minute mark. Wow. He's yeah. doing really well. Yeah, he is. He's so, not that in general in life in art that there's a timed bit to this, but. In acrylic April. In acrylic April, we're trying to. We're making it a goal to limit time only because. We'll put some of that turquoise right here. It's very easy to spend infinite time when working on a painting. You could just be in it forever. And our goal is to try to see things maybe a little quicker in a slightly fresher way so that we paint looser and more confidently. So can we? And there's a lot to a daily painting journey. There really is. I can get a lot more green into this blue. Pull some of that in there too. You know, one of the challenges outside of just being able to get the paint, the materials, the time, the space, it's the mental journey. Because I mean, sometimes there's you being able just to ready to get ready to do something, but there's also the overcoming all of the other emotional obstacles of the day, the family, the life, the work, the bills, the things to be able to be in a place to do this kind of creative work. You know? All right. Added a little highlight up there into his top feathers, just so we can really see those. Gemmed them out a little bit. Maybe put a little gem there. I think that's some nice motion. It's always fun to pull colors around. Mm -hmm. Rinse out so thoroughly. Change if you if you can or have to, because we're going to get into some of our brighter colors. Let's get into our bright orange. Get a nice clean brush here, and you just want to make sure your brush is clean. That's all, all we're doing. And I'm going to take this. It's going to be a little more yellow than red. But you've got, you know, you can make adjustments. Oh, yeah. Depending on the paint that you're using. Like, I'm painting with the abstract uh, acrylic by Sunlayer. You might be painting with uh, something different. So, you know, make adjustments as fits and is warranted by your paint. This really is coming along pretty quickly, though. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. This is not when I expected to be as chill as this. So it's so funny. Like, we were like, oh, that poppy, nothing. Yeah, right? yeah. And it's a level, boss. It's just that poppy was like, oh, you're not thinking I shall be easy. <laughs> I was kind of expecting the uh, the lips to be 
a little bit more in to them than they were, but you you just jammed right through those too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just getting my little oranges. Get your oranges going, huh? There's some pops of brighter orange right there. Can you see those? Yeah. There we go. Rinse out. Then we've got a few more little feathers. So it was the blue and the black, if you remember. But on these, we'll add a smidge, smidge of the white. So coming from back here, a little more black than that. Coming from back here, there's some black feathers, and then they pull here. And now I can get a little bit of that white and reveal the, the blue and gray that's in it. Hmm. What? Stacy, that's an interesting question. Hi, Stacy. When painting, how do you prevent your brush lines from showing? Uh, I paint a self-leveling paint and a soft brush, so I would get a fluid acrylic, and I would use something like a Silk 88 which is a purple handle. If Patty's here, she'll be telling you how much she likes them. Um, but that's really about the product. Heavy body paint is, for the most part, designed to show your brush stroke. You want to see it. It's for that painterly effect. Fluid paints, like uh, even craft paint, but the ones that you see even in the high-end paint, is about a self-leveling paint so you can do nice, smooth applications. Hmm. If you did not know that, that's what that is. Interesting. I think so. I thought it was very interesting. And you're working on an 8x8, right? I'm working on an 8x8 because the small size keeps me from exhausting myself out. Um, the first time I ever had done a daily painting, uh, I didn't know about that, and I let them get too big on myself. You were doing 16x20s, I think? Yes. <laughs> I don't I, know. I remember. What? We were... You were... I was thinking it was not a good plane. I'm going to get a little of my white in my navel. <laughs> she was so tired by like, was like eight, three or four. She was like, oh, I can't believe how much work this is. To just like, it is a lot of painting because you just. It was too much. It was too much. Um, and so I've done these a few times now. And what, what I've, I've learned a few things along the way. And again, I, I don't do the daily daily like some of the artists do on daily painters or daily paint work. What does that mean? Well, there's there's a whole community of artists that they paint every day, 365. Oh, right. Yeah. They're, and their thing is, we are daily painters. And we paint every day. It's 365. Every day. So, they're like you know. daily yoga people. That's what they are. I would, I would like to be a daily yoga person. So I'm going to try to get these little black uh, quill feathers that he had. I'm using my number four round, and I'll just try to be attentive and be aware of the texture and directionality of them and maybe scale. Let's see if I can't capture that, which seems to be working. You know, just pay attention to your reference if you're trying to see how it is. That's where those clues will be. And that's why uh, you'll hear a lot of artists they you should paint with the reference it, you know it's not that imagination isn't awesome it is but unless you're super versed in something you may not you know put some dark value right here yeah our memories play tricks on us all the time they really really do now i'm going to take my pad yellow and a little of my Naples. I'm going to mix them together. Can you guys see this? And this is going to give me an rich color. And I'm going to come to the forward part of this eye. Yeah. You got to watch these brushes for that drop that wants to hide on the handle. <laughs> the drop that wants to hide? Yes, there is one. And it's just... It's always going on. Now there's a yellow gray around the pupil. So let's see if I can capture that. That's meaningful. Doesn't really seem that meaningful to me. So I would say that the next meaningful thing for me is my white on here. I'm going to come a little bit to the back of the eye. And 
first I'll start with a blue gray. Mm. That's just a little bit. I'll come to the back of this pupil and I'll put that in. And then let's get a little bit of white. Just right there. Parrot tie. Parrot tie. Parrot eye is like eyes and eye. All right. I feel like we've done a wonderful little lovely sketch of him. I'll yeah. get some of my. Gotta say it like a parrot though. Arr. Arr. I don't think that's what they say. I think they go, they go squawk, 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 squawk. I don't know. They all growl at me. Oh. Uh, I might go like this and just paint this on the curve. You know, you know, I like to do that sometimes. Paint my little signature on the curve of something. So one could say this is the real macaw. <laughs> uh, all right. You know, I'm 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 blessed with a community that feeds me with these clever puns. They do. I'm not I'm not natively this good. All right. I think we did pretty good. He looks yeah. fairly gorgeous. He's a handsome fellow. I hope you guys are enjoying your handsome fellows. You're feeling more confident in your painting. You're starting to see your values. You're starting to see your textures and find ways into your canvas to be light and expressive along your art journey. Woo! Hmm. Tomorrow is going to be a lot of fun. I'm actually looking forward to it because I thought it was going to be something that was challenging. But when I did the homework, I was like, this is weirdly fun. So we'll see how it goes. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.